If you made every wrong decision possible when a hurricane was hitting your home, what would you do? In this how to be video, we'll follow the Kellers, see if we can make better decisions, and ultimately attempt to beat the alligators in Crawl. If you think you have a better way, let me know in the comments. If you like these how to be videos, consider liking and subscribing. We start out following Haley competing at a swim meet in Florida. Oh man, I know what this is. They're showing us that she's a competitive swimmer as a form of narrative framing in an attempt to make it somewhat believable when she inevitably outswims an alligator later in this movie, but it's not gonna fool me. All you need to do is take five seconds to Google how fast can alligators swim and you'll come up with 20 miles per hour on average. To put how f she is in perspective, Michael Phelps peaks at a meager six miles per hour. Good luck outswimming something over three times as fast as Michael Phelps. That's like you trying to outswim another human sprinting on land. Not gonna happen. Alligators are not to be underestimated on land either. They may seem like slow and lethargic beasts that just float around in the water, but when they decide to strike, they can be shockingly quick. Humans can run about 20 miles per hour on average, and a gator can only manage about half that for very short distances. But they are dangerous because they have ludicrous mode levels of acceleration and can get up to that 10 miles per hour in the blink of an eye. They are ambush predators after all. Basically, if you are not paying attention to an alligator that's 20 or 30 feet away, it'll probably catch you. There are videos of alligators catching cheetahs, one of the fastest animals on the planet. Again, to put things into perspective, cheetahs can go 0 to 60 in 3 seconds. If they can't get away, I don't think your average American stands a chance. Oh, and to top it all off, they can climb trees and fences too. Why are we even suggesting or considering that Haley could outswim a gator when she can't even beat other people? Hi, because what are you? The apex predator. Yeah, you are. Apex predator all day. I'm sure this arrogance will fuel some bad decision making. Look, I'm not saying we're not at the top of the food chain, but nature can be a merciless, vicious bitch if you swim outside of your lane. Back in the locker room, Haley just now realizes that a Category 5 hurricane is about to hit them, and mandatory evacuations are underway. Category 5 hurricanes can have winds exceeding 175 miles per hour and storm surges above 20 feet. Houses get ripped off their foundations and float down the streets at these levels, and you just now heard about it and shrugged it off like it was just a light tropical storm passing through? Haley was probably too distracted playing Raid Shadow Legends to realize that the hurricane's path shifted towards her. You too can get dangerously immersed in Raid, exploring millions of champion combinations and mastering countless tactics as you take on Raid bosses, dungeon runs, campaign battles, and PvP arena matches. There are 16 different factions, such as Orcs, High Elves, Dark Elves, Dwarves, and each faction has many unique champions. With over 500 champions total, you can build your team, develop your champions, and raid until your power goes out and you realize everyone in your town was already evacuated. It's free to play on both mobile and PC, so use my link in the description to download it. Later in the movie, I theorized that these crawl alligators were being bred for intelligence and aggression. They're basically the precursors to Broadmaw and Gator from the Lizardmen faction. These behemoths evolved to walk on their hind legs and use weapons and armor. Haley and Dave are lucky that they're not dealing with these biotanks. Raid recently released its biggest ever update, the Doom Tower. It's a giant tower with 120 floors, a bunch of secret challenge rooms, and 12 badass bosses to take on. There's a bunch of new champions and events coming this month, including special Valentine's Day events, so now's a great time to get started. Use my link in the description to get 50,000 silver, 50 gems, 1 energy refill, 1 clan boss key, 5 mystery shards, 1 day XP booster, and 1 free champion hex weaver. But only if you're a new player and only for the next 30 days. All this treasure will be waiting for you here. Here. Good luck, you will probably need it. On one hand, it's tempting to be super critical of her for being so careless and nonchalant. On the other hand, I ignore tornado warnings because, come on, what are the chances it actually hits me? But back on the first hand, hurricanes are arguably far more dangerous. A tornado is likely just going to destroy a mobile home in bum f Missouri, whereas a hurricane will wipe out entire regions of coastline states. I'd say she has a lot more reason to be worried than I ever do. In US history, the worst hurricane caused 
caused 10 times the damage that the worst tornado did. Oh, and she lives in Florida where alligators eat people. So yeah, I feel justified and in no way a hypocrite for condemning Haley whilst habitually ignoring natural disasters myself. No, why? Oh, he's not answering my calls. A rogue wave from the hurricane hasn't even broken through yet, and they're already losing track of each other. From what I cared to overhear on their phone call, the family is fractured from divorce and animosity. They're all somewhat repulsed by each other, yet simultaneously share a strong tether of kinship. Their relationships with each other are all very complicated and stupid, which is why Haley hopped into her Jeep to hunt down her dad that she hasn't talked to in forever, because he went no contact on her sister. Not shoot guns into the hurricane. What? Get your guns into the hurricane? Yeah, that's only when it's a Sharknado. Haley gets held up at a blockade where they're telling everyone to turn around because the hurricane's heading straight towards them. It's already getting pretty bad out by now. It's tempting to head back, but she looks at her phone, her dad's face on it, pulling her heartstrings. She can't leave, not without him. With the confidence a Jeep instills and her above average swimming capabilities, she boldly decides to go head on into the mouth of the hurricane to find him. Why didn't he board up his home? It's common practice and this guy's a home contractor. Though it might be asking too much from him considering he doesn't understand how to operate a phone or read the news. This family screwed up a bunch of things way earlier on. Florida is one of the most hurricane prone places that you could live. They definitely should have had a plan in place already. Usually you have days of notice before a hurricane hits unless your head is in the ground, so there should be plenty of time to do what you need to do and get out in time. The Kellers have money and transportation, so there's no reason they should be staying instead of evacuating. They should have checked in on each other, in person if necessary, before the hurricane showed up. This last minute it, oh, a hurricane's making landfall and I don't know where my dad is, shit is probably more realistic than I'd like to admit. <laughs> But still, come on. After getting a proper head count, they should have made sure that their valuables and important documents are either collected or stored in bolted down waterproof containers, preferably in the attic. Their cars are stocked up with emergency supplies, have gas and are in good shape. Their electricity and gas to the house are shut off so it doesn't flood and burn down at the same time, which would really suck, as well as storm shutters installed over the windows with any weak points reinforced. But most importantly, they need to have guns or chains chainsaws on hand just in case sharks start taking flight in the 150 mile an hour winds. In all seriousness, wouldn't sharks swimming in the floodwaters be a big problem? I mean, Florida does have a lot of sharks on its coast, which attack and eat the occasional person who swims out too far. Turns out, not really. Sharks have an organ called the lateral line that can sense pressure changes indicative of impending hurricanes. When they sense these pressure changes, they swim to deeper water to avoid getting washed ashore into some retiree's beachside pool, or stuck flapping on the highway when the tide pulls out. Well, what what about the 1.3 million alligators that live all throughout Florida? Doesn't this have the potential to form a gator nato or a gator cane? Gator cane? Again, not really. Attacks in Florida are very rare, with 24 confirmed fatal alligator attacks since 1973. And I'd bet most of those deaths were caused by idiots trying to feed or take up close pictures of them. Despite their walnut-sized brain, they aren't stupid when it comes to weathering storms either. Like sharks, they detect the pressure changes of an impending hurricane and hunker down in their natural habitats. Doesn't mean they can't end up in your backyard due to the massive flooding though, or find them in your dining room. These sorts of situations are statistically rare enough that it'd be reasonable for Haley to not really expect a similar encounter. Still, having firearms for defense during natural disaster situations isn't a bad idea. Besides potential encounters with predatory wildlife, there are lots of opportunists and criminals that would take advantage of the chaos. Never hurts to have some big iron on your hip. No sign of him at the condo. His truck is gone too, so he must be out somewhere else. Unless this dude is a complete psychopath, he wouldn't just leave Sugar behind. Haley could wait for him to come back, but the lack of storm shutters and emergency supplies, the unanswered calls, the half-drunk bottle of bourbon on the table, all suggest this dude got snapped up. If he was going to get supplies, he should have done it days ago. Knowing about their other house from the divorce, it's likely he would be there doing something. He sure as hell isn't on the job right now. Haley should leave a note, grab Sugar, and head to their old house immediately while sending Beth an update. Or 
or she could instead take a stroll down memory lane and reminisce about a time when she actually won swim competitions and had a strong loving father-daughter relationship. Uh, did she all of a sudden forget that a Category 5 hurricane is about to rain hell on them and that her dad is potentially in a life-threatening condition? Weird, it's like a ghost town. Everyone's gone. No shit. It's because everyone evacuated because there's a hurricane. Finally, she wises up and heads to their old house left over from the divorce. At least Haley's providing text updates. If something bad happens to her, which is increasingly likely with the Cat 5 hurricane arriving in force by now, Beth will at least have a last known location she can send to rescuers once the storm passes. His truck is here, which is a good sign because we know he didn't get swept into a flooded ravine while trying to escape. If that was the case, well, there would be no finding him, and with how ferocious these alligators are, he would certainly be dead meat. None of these people bothered to board up the windows or even shut the doors to their house either. What are they even doing? There's no sign of her dad so far, so Haley calls his phone one more time, and not only is the ringtone volume on, but it has cell service, received multiple messages from concerned family members, and had evacuation alerts. If only he put his phone in his pocket. Speaking of, why do older folks not keep their phone on them most of the time? Your phone is about as useful as a rock if you don't have it on you. Yeah, yeah, they don't feel the need to be connected at all times like an addicted millennial would, but at least keep it on you during a fucking natural disaster. Haley's investigation continues as she spots a bunch of tools next to the sink. Don't tell me he was doing some last minute plumbing. Could the screenwriters really not think of a better reason he'd be missing an unconscious? <laughs> That's why you board up the windows, in case you were wondering. And the garage door is up too. Does Barry not understand the concept of shutting doors? Like a good doggo, Sugar alerts Haley to the crawl space entrance. As stupid as it seems, all clues are pointing to him being down there. With the mud, dead animals, debris, and God knows what else is down there, I'd think taking a minute to put on some gloves, proper pants, and shoes would be wise. I gotta believe she still has some old clothes here. Or you could just go for it in capris and sandals. God, Dad, I knew you would come down here in your freaking hurricane. I know it's your dad and all, but if he really is down here, he's definitely a candidate for a Darwin Award. At some point, you just have to cut the dead weight off, like his wife did when she divorced him. Haley keeps trudging onward, stumbling into more clues, which eventually lead her to Barry lying in the mud unconscious. I was really holding out for there being some legitimate reason he's down here, or that he wasn't down here in the first place, but a gator dragged him down here. Nope. It's now confirmed, Barry Pepper, during a Category 5 hurricane, was in the crawl space of a house nobody lives in, trying to fix the plumbing for a sink nobody uses. I have no words. I think we could probably wrap this video up and say that we could have beaten the alligators in crawl by not being total fucking idiots. But let's just continue as if Barry was doing everything correctly, but somehow he was knocked unconscious by a flying 2x4 and dragged by a gator under the crawl space to feed on him later, where Haley, with her supreme detective work, finds him. Oh my god. The most obvious animal that would cause a bite wound like that is an alligator, considering the size of the bite and all the gator signs around their home. While alligators aren't known to attack unprovoked or prey upon humans, it can still happen if they feel threatened or you enter their nest. Some alligators may have washed up into their house and found a new home in the crawl space. Barry crawling into their nest probably both threatened and startled them so they attacked. Some sources say that alligators are more scared of humans than we are of them, and that's why human attacks attacks are rare. I'm calling BS on that. I'm definitely more scared of them, which is why I stay way out of their reach. These things attack lions, and they're scared of us? Yeah, okay. They don't fuck around when you're in their territory. Just go on YouTube or LiveLeak and type in alligator attacks. I still remember that story of a two-year-old getting snatched and killed by an alligator at a Disney resort in Florida. The dad attacked the gator, but couldn't stop it from dragging his son into the lagoon. Truly horrific. While alligators are a serious threat, the bigger issue is Barry's current condition worsening. Haley did a good job by checking for a pulse and listening for breathing, and luckily he's got both because emergency services won't be responding. 
This isn't a National Guard commercial. No gung-ho 20-year-old is gonna rappel out of a Black Hawk helicopter in the nick of time just for you. The first thing she should do is thoroughly check the bite wound to ensure that he doesn't have severe bleeding. An adult male will die if they lose half a gallon of blood. Pulse and respiration are worthless if he's gonna bleed out in 5-10 to 10 minutes. Barry doesn't appear to have hemorrhaging, so on to the next problem. If the bacterial infection caused by all the rotting flesh in the gator's mouth causes septic shock, which it seems to be doing, if he loses 15-20% to 20 of his blood, if his neck, head, chest wall, or lungs got injured, if he had fluid buildup in his lungs, or if anything else happens that seizes up his respiration and heart rate, he's in deep sh if his breathing stopped, she'd have to drag him out of there and drive through the low floodwaters to the nearest operational hospital while giving him a rescue breath every 5-6 to six seconds. Even 5-10 to 10 minutes without oxygen to the brain can cause serious and irreversible brain damage. I don't think Haley could effectively do this. At minimum, Barry would have brain damage, but most likely he would be dead. If his pulse stopped too, doing all that and having to give chest compressions is just not going to be possible. Barry would 100% be dead. While it looked like the house was situated on a bit of a hill, this hurricane is just kicking off, so the floodwaters could quickly rise above it and drown him if she doesn't get him to high ground. But that's just part of the problem. If the floodwaters reach 3 feet or higher, she won't be able to make the drive to a hospital without getting lifted and swept away. That is, unless you got the keys to one of these bad boys. To state the obvious, she needs to get him out of there ASAP which is a lot easier said than done. She needs to be wary of his injuries and not just yank him, which could worsen the situation. As an ex-volunteer firefighter who's practiced rescue carries and drags, manually dragging a lifeless human that weighs 50 more pounds than you through debris-filled mud in a confined space where you can't stand up at all is very difficult. And she's barefooted with muddy hands. Again, maybe slippers weren't the best choice when trying to rescue your dad in a hurricane? Since he's breathing and has a pulse, the absolute best thing she could do is help him regain consciousness. He probably passed out due to the pain of his collarbone being snapped like a wishbone, the emotional stress of the attack, loss of blood, dehydration, and possibly septic shock depending on how long it's been since the attack. Haley should loosen any constrictive clothing, lift his legs above his heart level to aid in blood circulation, and get him some water. Rainwater, not that sewage flowing in. They say not to shake and slap somebody that passed out, but I think Barry's an exception. He should regain consciousness and can then crawl his own dumb ass out of there. If that doesn't work, finding a tarp to put him on will reduce the friction and make dragging him substantially easier, which he conveniently has nearby. Good thinking, Haley. Well, ladies and gents, I think we did it. I think we successfully saved Barry Pepper from drowning and getting eaten by alligators. Just a few more steps and we can can get him in the car and take him to a hospital where he can get sewed up, take some antibiotics, and be as good as new. Oh, come on. An alligator is not gonna bust through some wooden staircase like the Kool-Aid Man. Haley is lucky this alligator already has a belly full of human meat because they can move way faster than that. Remember, these things can pounce cheetahs. Haley trying to pull 180 pounds of dead weight in the mud with her bare hands and feet is a joke. If she can't run, literally, what options does she have? What should anyone do when confronted by an alligator like this? Well, basically what she did, as futile as it would be. Unloading a Benelli M4 full of slugs into its face is your best bet. Crawling away as quickly as possible is your second best bet. You can't puff your chest out, make loud noises, or play dead with gators. Your only chance to survive is to fight back before it catches you and starts death rolling you. And the only weakness you can realize realistically exploit is gouging its eyes. The problem with this strategy is that its eyes are located behind its giant pissed off mouth. I'm starting to think the internet is bullshitting us about how to defend against an alligator attack. If you, a tuk-tuk driver making an oil delivery, for some reason, just go with me here, rounded the corner of a back street and were confronted by an American Abrams tank, according to the internet, you should try to board it and spray paint its optics while it's trying to crush you under its treads. Unless you're Dominic Toretto, that ain't happening. Yeah, let me juke its business end, baseball slide up next to it, board the pre 
prehistoric monster like a f***ing bull rider, thumb its eyeballs before it rolls its 800 pounds of weight onto you, then dismount the writhing pissed off beast without its tail sweeping your legs and shattering them into a hundred pieces. What could possibly go wrong? Then again, they don't really have any other options. If it did explode towards them and bite down on his legs with its 3,000 pounds per square inch of jaw strength, it will crush his femurs and its inch and a half to two inch long teeth will sink deep into his flesh, enough to potentially sever arteries. If that didn't wake him up, I don't know what would. With that kind of jaw strength, it's impossible to pry its mouth open and get free. If there's water nearby, it'll immediately drag him into it and death roll him until he drowns. If there's no water nearby, it'll just roll him on the ground until he dies. Once the gator starts death rolling you, it's pretty much over. It is called death rolling for a reason. It disorients you, knocks the air out of you, breaks your bones, rips your limbs off, and the power and speed of the thrashing makes it near impossible to use whatever non-ripped off limbs you have left to fight back. This would all happen in a few seconds. The gator would then take his lifeless body back to its den, where it would wait for his corpse to start rotting before tearing pieces off to eat. Gator don't play no shit. Gator don't play no shit. With no Benelli on hand, I think she should just drop her dad and use him as a tasty distraction so she can escape with sugar. Haley's much more merciful than I am, and summons some adrenaline strength and starts hauling Barry back the way she came. Her wardrobe continues to malfunction, and her phone falls out of her capri pants, fashionably small pockets. She really didn't think this outfit through. Window for hurricane force wind. This dude even had a radio telling him a hurricane was coming while he was plumbing in the crawl space. Jesus Christ. Haley pulls Barry back to where she found him, which was conveniently blocked off just enough for them to get through, but not the gator. I'm surprised she remembered how to get back in this maze of a crawl space with a gator snapping at her dad's feet. The gator isn't the only thing they need to worry about. That hurricane that nobody seems to give a shit about is picking up. Dave, yeah, we'll start using his real name now, is just now regaining consciousness after being pulled out of the gator's jaws. Good timing, bro, just take your time. Soaking the jacket to get him some water was pretty clever. Haley is scoring about a seven out of 10 right now. I had to knock some points off for the slippers and capris, but she's been pretty resourceful. Must have gotten more of her mother's genetics. I don't need your help. <laughs> Of course you would say something like that. Being a dumbass is perfectly on brand. He then says, what's happening with this storm? Oh, you mean the category five hurricane you completely disregarded? Yeah, it's getting pretty bad. I like this guy better unconscious. To be fair, he's probably in a bit of shock as evidenced by him not realizing his leg was snapped in two. He really needs to get a splint on that. Oh no, Haley's phone received a message. Now she has to go get it so she can text her friend back. I'm about to deduct her score to 6 out of 10 here. Going for your phone is just too much risk for too little gain. Who are you going to call, Beth? Her inability to rescue you should be obvious. The police or animal control? Good luck with that. I'm sure they'll want to risk their lives fishing alligators out of your basement during a hurricane in this fictional world where gators are this cunning, aggressive, and deadly. Hell, in this fictional world, I don't understand why anyone would ever live in Florida. It'd be like living in Jurassic Park with the power out. Nope, I think I can deal with a few cold winter months instead. Look, I'd get it if your uncle was Jocko Willink, who would swim through the hurricane's floodwaters to get to you, choking out any gators that got in his way with his biceps. Actually, he'd probably just answer the phone and just say, good. Dad went missing in a Category 5 hurricane. Good. You learned. Found him unconscious and bleeding out from an alligator attack. Good. More time to get better. Got attacked by more alligators and now you're both trapped in a flooding crawl space. Good. We have the opportunity to figure out a solution. They had the opportunity to reevaluate why they made such horrible decisions, but we all know they won't. Time for a galaxy brain move. They could just break the wood floor above them. It's so obvious and simple, I would have thought that even Dave and Haley could figure this out, but they never do. With them being trapped in a crawl space being so central to the plot, why wouldn't you choose a house that had a concrete slab over the basement so it's actually realistic? From this shot, it just looks like some old wooden planks held in by rusty nails. They could probably lay on their backs and kick them loose. Well, Haley could. Dave could probably kick some boards loose with one leg, though. They wouldn't even need to kick them loose. Later on in the movie, we see 
Dave crawl a few feet from their safe space to grab his tool belt and shovel. They should easily be able to pry and push the boards above them loose and escape. Dave is a home contractor for f sake. How was this option never tried this entire movie? Yep, Haley decides that securing her iPhone is the best method for getting out of here. Could she at least go around her dad instead of crawling over his shattered leg? I don't like Dave at all, but he's your dad and there's no reason to risk kneeing his fractured tibia. Her dad tells her to go around to the left because he thinks it's safer. You literally just became conscious. You have no idea where the alligator is or what has happened since you got bitten. What would possibly make you think that this is a safer route? If anything, taking the longer, more convoluted maze route is far more dangerous than a straight shot to the phone where you can quickly backtrack back past the pipes if necessary. After giving her shitty directions, Professor Dave then starts doling out some unfounded alligator facts to Haley. Thanks, but I don't think I'm going to be taking advice from the dude who put himself in a precarious position and got bitten. I'd bet my life his gator facts are bullshit too. He first tells her that alligators can't hear out of the water, which is patently false. Then he says that they can see in the dark well. That's actually true, they do have great night vision, but still, it's pretty common sense. His last piece of advice is that alligators are not as fast out of the water. This is technically true, they are faster in the water, but when you're forced to crawl bare feet in the mud, they are definitely way faster than you. Telling Haley this is horribly misleading and just gives her extremely dangerous levels of confidence. I'm surprised Dave lived long enough to have kids. Dad, keep talking to me. You're gonna regret saying that. Dad, just stop it. Called it. Haley then says, you don't know anything about me. If there was this much animosity between you two, why were you so inclined to go through hell to check on him when all you were told was that he didn't answer his phone? Haley successfully navigates Dave's stupid detour, slipping past all the gators, and finally reaches her phone. I still think the straight shot would have been far safer and easier. Of course, the big gators hanging out at the foot of the basement exit. I sure hope Sugar had enough sense to stay away. Instead of retreating to his safe area first before making some calls, she starts dialing 911 within spitting distance of a 15 foot dinosaur. I mean technically they aren't dinosaurs, but I'm making a point here. I gotta drop her score to a 4 out of 10 for this and for listening to her idiot dad so much. Naturally the ringing gets the attention of the alligators. <laughs> How will Haley get herself out of this pickle? Find out in part two where we get to make fun of Haley and Dave's poor decisions as they get ripped apart and eaten by alligators, and figure out if we can beat the Gatoracane in Crawl.